So I already cover about how to like do messaging, right? Like ROI messaging, and then you have, you know, different types of lure, content lures, like webinar, asking somebody to co-host uh, a webinar, a podcast, be a guest on that. Um, uh, you could be inviting them to a product advisory board, right? And we talked about how to rotate it. So let's just say cohort one, week one is going through an ROI sequence. You know, four weeks later, they're going to go through another sequence. So in week five, they're going to go through a podcast sequence. Um, in week, whoops, uh, week 10, they're going to go through, um, sorry, rotate this again. Week 10, they're going to go through another ROI. Week 15 is a podcast thing. Week 20, another ROI. And then week 25, product advisory board, and then you rotate again, right? So then week 30, it'd be ROI, week 35, webinar, etc. So the idea here is that, you know, you're giving these cohorts or your, pro, you know, your prospect lists a bunch of different ways to engage with you. Um, and I think this is super important. In all of these instances, however, the call to action is always going to be always going to be getting them on a call. Okay? Getting them on a call. This is your number one priority. Out of all of this stuff here, you're trying to get them on a phone call um, or video call, right? Now, if you get them on a call for an ROI sequence, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna go through and run through a sales demo most likely. But again, I shared a video about how to structure sales demos. Um, if you're getting them on a call for a webinar or a podcast or a product advisory board, it's very similar to a demo. Um, but the way that we want to structure it is we want to do it a little bit differently because we don't want to be overly pitching the company. But what you want to do for all these content pieces, these always cover the topic of all of these will always equate to discussing the pain point you're solving for and what are they doing for it. And whatever they're doing, that's what they're sharing as a thought leader, as a co-host of a webinar, as a guest on a podcast, or joining your product advisory board, right? Um, so let's just say, for example, you get them on a call. Now, you always want to do this. Similarly, one to two minutes, intro, shoot the shit. <clears throat> don't get, I've seen some just get way too involved in this. Don't need to do that. Um, then the next three to four minutes, setting expectations. This is similar to the demo stuff that we talked about. <clears throat> so set the expectations. And then in this case, instead of demoing a product, the next 5, 10, 12 minutes, <coughs> you're going to have them discuss the pain point. And what they're doing about it. After this is up, next 12 to 15 minutes, This is where you're going to provide the ask. When they discuss the pain points and what they're doing about it, this is what you're using to gather as the topic for the content. Now, you might have the, your your product might be solving for a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. You need to with hold from talking about your company and you withhold from talking about your solution in these in this in this point here that's not what you're doing you're listening to them and you're trying to listen to how they talk about the pain and you're trying to listen to what they're currently doing it doesn't matter if they're using a competitor it doesn't matter if they're doing it manually um it doesn't matter if they don't have a solution right like what you're all only trying to do is get them to talk about it and then in the last few minutes, you're providing the ask. Meaning, if it's a co-host of a webinar, you want to get them to provide, you know, 
three days times <clears throat> two to three weeks from now that they're able to do the webinar or be a podcast, same thing, asking for three days and times, joining a product advisory board, you'll want to then, I like to structure it in a way where, you know, for a product advisory board, that's a great way to kind of like start conversations with more senior executives at like larger logos because um, it's a fairly common ask from them. And I try to use that as a way to work backwards uh, from the goal of that engagement to be in a conversion to a customer. So what that means is that if I'm inviting somebody to a product advisory board, I'm expecting to close them in six to 12 months. And how I'm doing that is, again, the ask here is like, maybe it's once a month. I think that's a lot, but maybe once every two months or quarter, you're doing a 30 minute call. And on that 30 minute call, you're basically going to demo your product and then you're going to get feedback as to why they wouldn't buy it or where, where they see the problems of implementing it in their organization. So they're going to give you a list of things. And the way that you want to structure is like, because we're trying to go after companies like yours, right? You're not talking about selling them directly. Uh, but that's that laundry list of things is what you're going to go and then build. You're going to solve for 80% of that by the next time you talk to them, another two to three months later. Then you can share another product demo. That should be 80% of the way there. You're gonna ask them the questions again. Okay, we've made progress on these things. What else is missing? Why would you still not implement? And if you go through three, four of these cycles, I mean, really like two to three times, you should be starting a conversation. They be, should be organically engaging with you of like how they're gonna buy it, right? Because now you're building and you're solving for their problems that they've been telling you. And that's how I leverage the product advisory board. But in all these instances, always make sure that you focus on a call to action that gets you scheduling any of these into a calendar. <clears throat> if it's not in the calendar, if it's not in their calendar, it doesn't exist. You gotta remember that. This is the same thing, I, and I'm going to talk about this separately, but the same thing with any sales demo. If they're really excited, they're really amped up, and they need to go talk to somebody else about it, you should just ask them, well, how long that's going to take? And then you should say, oh, great, well, let's just pencil something in, you know, no hard obligations. Let's just pencil something in for the next two weeks, two weeks from now. You should always get something locked in before you leave that conversation. And the reason why is because to get them on a call, People's attention spans nowadays are so, so short. They could be super excited. You could be selling the cure for cancer. And then two weeks later, they're going to forget what the conversation is about. So really, like, there's a true time decay in attention span. The minute that you get off of that video call, if you don't have something locked in, the, after five to ten minutes after the call, they're going to forget. They're going to move on to their day. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone through that experience of like, oh, that's really cool. I could see some value in it. And then I just forget what the context was. Um, and then that person has to basically start all over again. So if you're selling, you need to keep this in mind of getting them out of the call and then locking down a date at the end of that call for your next call. Number one goal, okay? So, well, after you get them on the call, your, your immediate goal after that is to get them on another call. And if they are uncomfortable, you're not going to force the issue, but you're going to immediately follow up with them within one to two minutes after the call and be like, hey, it was great talking to you. Let's just knock something out. Let me know what your schedule looks like two to three weeks from now. Just give me some dates that you're open. And then you're going to send them a calendar invite to lock in that date or time based on what they've already suggested. Okay. Um, so that's how I would structure these, any of these types of conversations to getting them starting into that sales cycle motion, okay? Um, I'll talk in a separate video about like how to leverage webinar guests and podcast guests into, uh, into more of like a forward-facing sales motion, but these are all ways for you to basically engage, qualify them, and then 
share what it is that you're doing. Um, in the product advisory report situation, you're getting the feedback loop to then make the iterations necessary to ultimately acquire them as a customer.